right, it's the Thursday evening edition of Weather for Weather Geeks. We're finally at the end of this long stretch of very chilly weather, and we've got a pretty great forecast for the next couple of days. Wanted to first, though, this evening, put a final bow, if you will, on the uh, snow for the uh, season. We talked about this some last evening, but I, I wanted to throw on some uh, local numbers this evening. These are from Kokoros observers across the area, kokoros.org, the website to go to if you want to uh, learn how to become a, a, a weather observer, a, a volunteer, if you will, uh, that uh, upload you upload your data each day uh, to a website and then uh, the public can access that data. Uh, these are some uh, snowfall totals for the entire season from some of our local Kokoros observers. Once you're down into southern Columbiana County, Lisbon on south, a lot of single digit totals for the entire season. Um, Hanoverton had 13 and a half. Once you're up to towards the 224, 14, 15 inches or so, pretty common. Uh, Youngstown Warren Airport not shown on the map here. 22 at the airport. That was it. Uh, you got some 20 plus inch amounts, even some 30 plus inch amounts. Uh, the farther north and northeast you are, of course, and you know this map kind of, even though the amounts are very low, the general contours of the map are kind of typical for around here in terms of snow. You see maximum values in our TV viewing area, typically in northern Trumbull, northern and eastern Mercer. Now just to the west of our viewing area, uh, one high spot, uh, Hiram, up in uh, northeastern parts of, uh, of Portage County, 43 inches or so. Uh, Middlefield close to 30 inches. Kent, Ravenna, somewhere between 16 and 22 inches. All this, of course, is way, way below the average. And with that, we're going to close the book on snowfall in 2022-2023. All right, 59 was our high today. It actually overachieved some at the Youngstown Warren Airport, but this is still about 8 degrees cooler than average. And uh, through the first four days of the month, this is the coldest start to May since 2005. Depending on what metric you use, and we'll wait for today's final numbers to come in, it may be the coldest first four days of May on record for our area. We'll just have to see how today's numbers influence the math, but Either way, it's been remarkably chilly to kick off May. 14 degrees below average when you factor in highs and lows. And, of course, this cooler weather stretches all the way back through the last 10 days or so of April. Every day over the last almost two weeks straight has been cooler than the average. By a fair margin on some of these days, of course, we had 44 for a high a couple of days ago. The coldest May 2nd on record. So yeah, pretty remarkable stuff. And you know, you could argue that karma got the best of us after uh, what a remarkably mild and snow-free winter we had late April, early May. Yikes. But again, things are about to change. The clouds are thinning out this evening. This upper level low is finally jogging far enough to the east that drier air is going to uh, win the battle as we go through the overnight. Now that being said, um, a couple of things to uh, bring to your attention for the overnight into uh, tomorrow morning. First of all, the National Weather Service offices in Cleveland and Pittsburgh did hoist frost advisories for some of their area in our viewing area. That's every county except Columbiana, but you you know the drill here. Even if you're in Columbiana County, Beaver County, PA, not included in the frost advisory, but even in those counties, um, bring in those hanging baskets tonight. Um, it's going to be cold. No hard freeze in most spots, but some of the colder nooks, maybe 34-ish degrees as the day gets underway. The other thing we'll have to be cognizant of tomorrow morning is fog, which we'll talk about momentarily. But with the clearing sky tonight, the full moon is going to be out there tonight. Uh, the full moon in the month of May, oftentimes referred to as the full flower moon for obvious reasons, given the time of the year that it is. The moon is technically full like at one in the afternoon tomorrow, but for all intents and purposes, a full moon tonight. Now about the fog. Some of the modeling is a little more aggressive than others. Um, this is our what we call our in-house model just one of several computer models that we look at, and it drops the visibility locally, and I mean real locally, um, as we go into tomorrow morning, uh, especially around the river valleys. Now, we've had a fair amount of rain for days now. Uh, none of it's been tremendously heavy, but the ground is wet. The sky clears tonight, even though the nights are pretty short now, now that we're into May. Cool, or a cool ground, uh, moisture on the ground, clearing sky, calm wind, maybe some fog setting up here and there as we head through the overnight and uh, you might be scraping some frost in some spots tomorrow morning and then just a great afternoon coming up for our Friday. Uh, no complaints for Friday afternoon. Friday night looks mostly clear. Saturday looks mostly sunny. The one change we've made to the weekend forecast is to increase the clouds on Sunday. Now our model here looks kind of threatening uh, Sunday morning. This is probably a little aggressive. Um, but I'm not going to be surprised if it ends up being a fairly cloudy end of the afternoon on Sunday. And maybe we even get in on some showers towards the evening. But I do think 
The vast majority of the daylight hours Sunday should be dry at this point. We're going to maintain a dry forecast for the daylight hours anyway on Sunday. Stay tuned, though, for further updates. The trend has certainly been a little bit faster with this kind of mid-level, middle atmospheric disturbance that at the very least will probably bring us some clouds Sunday afternoon and maybe even some wet weather towards the end of the day. But these temperatures are delightful compared to where we've been. 70 on Saturday, 74 on Sunday, and 40s and 50s at night. The heating demand way down. Um, you know, there's still going to be a little chill in the air at times during the morning hours over the next week or so. But for a lot of us, the furnace season, the heating season is coming to an end pretty quickly once we get past tonight and tomorrow morning. Now, a lot of us are going to be trying to mow our grass, certainly in the coming days, given how inhospitable the weather has been uh, in recent days for that kind of activity. Uh, just know that the weekend largely fine, but Sunday night, maybe even as early as about sunset Sunday evening, uh, showers may encroach. And while I don't see a washout coming Monday or Tuesday, those are two days early in the week that we will have a chance in our forecast of at least spotty showers, maybe even some thunder on Monday. Neither day is a washout. And then beyond that, I think we'll have great mowing weather and great outdoor weather for the second half of next week, Wednesday through Friday. And again, the warmer weather is here to stay for a little while anyway. Um, much of the next week to 10 days will be warmer than the average. I think once we get beyond this 6 to 10 and 8 to 14 day period, taking us into maybe the third week of May. I think it'll start to cool down compared to the average um, by that point. But I think we're in pretty good shape through about mid-month um, before some cooler risks return to the forecast. But it won't be anything like what we've been dealing with over the last couple of weeks. No weather for Weather Geeks on Friday. This will do it for the week. Thanks for watching tonight. Thanks for watching every day this week. Have a great rest of your Thursday night, a great Friday. I'll see you back here on Monday.